Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope everybody is doing well and safe. So in today's video, we will discuss about AWS Cloud9. It's a cloud-based ID provided by AWS for writing, running, and debugging your code. Now, ID is an integrated development environment where you basically write up your code, run your code, and debug your code when you are doing the application development. You can also do the same for writing the scripts as well. Now, I'm not saying that you have to use Cloud9. It's better you understand what Cloud9 brings with, right? All the functionalities, how Cloud9 is powerful when it comes to AWS, right? So you can obviously go for VS Code, Visual Studio, or any other ID which you're working with. But with AWS Cloud9, one, one of the thing that uh, I understand is like you have to bear a cost. If you're running very high-end EC2 instance, because in order to run Cloud9 environment, there is a instance that needs to be running in the backend for you. So you have to bear a cost for that particular instance, depend upon the size of instance that you are provisioning, how much you are doing a development on this IDE. So let's understand this and I'll show you how you can provision Cloud9 and what all extension as a pre-package come with Cloud9 environment. So Cloud9, as I said, cloud-based IDE that lets you to write, run and debug your code with a browser it's a browser based environment it's not something a software that you install on your machine like vs code and start doing your development it includes code editor debugger terminal cloud9 comes pre-packaged with es essential tools for popular programming languages including javascript python php and more so you basically don't have to worry about you know uh, installing specific packages so it comes with a lot of pre-packaged environment which a developer can interact with. So you don't need to install a files or configure your development machine to start a new project because it's all prepackaged. Since your Cloud9 is a cloud-based ID, you can work on your projects from office, home, or anywhere using the internet connected machine. So that's one of the good part of Cloud9. It can be accessed anywhere, but obviously with a security manner, right? A secure manner. Cloud9 also provides a seamless experience for developing serverless application, enabling you to easily define the resources, debug, and switch between the local and remote execution for serverless application. So in short, I would say this gives you much more benefit uh, when, it, when you are interacting with AWS services or when you are developing an application. But as you know, like Cloud, Within cloud, you can interact, you can transfer the files, you can transfer your code within a matter of seconds. For, for example, if you're working on a VS code, right? You are developing your application. As an example, I'm, I'm just trying to tell you the difference. Now, in order to share that particular package to a different team, you have to make certain sort of connections. Like you're on a different network and you are sharing on a different network. So you need to be on VPN or internal network in order to make sure everything is secure. With Cloud9, it's a matter of second where uh, you can share your package itself on internet, but in a secure manner. So that's very easy. With Cloud9, you can share the development environment with your team, enabling you to pair program and track each other's input in a real time. What are the benefits comes with Cloud9? It's a browser based, right? Real time code, you can, together you can do a code with different team members in a real time. We, we can uh, build a serverless application with ease, direct terminal access to AWS. So you don't have to configure access key and secret key and region. So you can directly, once you have the Cloud9 environment up and running, you can interact with AWS services because it comes with a temporary access key and secret key with a token in the backend start a new project quickly and one of the good part of cloud9 the speed of uh, you know working on the internet environment is very fast as compared to your local computer now again if you're using your local computer at very high internet speed then that's a different scenario but by default you don't have to worry about configuring the internet environment on cloud9 as well so I hope this clears a lot in terms of what we want to achieve with Cloud9. Now it's time for a demo. Let me stop the presentation and navigate to my AWS management console. I am already running a Cloud9 environment, but I'll show you how you can provision it. So what you have to do, you have to go to AWS Cloud9. You can also search AWS, it's Cloud9 actually, not AWS. 
cloud with no space nine. So once you click on cloud nine, you will get navigated to this particular introduction page, which is basically a cloud ID for writing, running and debugging your code. You can go through all, you know, all, all the benefits and everything over here because uh, whatever we have discussed, it's written in a different language, I would say, but the concept is same. Okay. So this comes with a built-in terminal with a pre-configured AWS CLI. So you don't have to specifically configure AWS CLI to, you know, interact with the environment. Another important factor, if you can see on an, it, it creates an EC2 machine in the backend that connects to your own Linux server through SSH as well. Okay. So in order to create cloud nine, what you have to do, click on create environment, give the name. I'm giving this as demo one and it has to be a unique name. Okay. If you have an existing compute, you can select the existing server and based upon that, uh, you have to provide your username, host and a uh, port number on which you want to connect. I don't have any server running, especially for, uh, you know, to use this cloud nine environment. Now here is the type of instance. T2 micro is very small. Uh, initially you can start working with T2 micro, but at certain point of time, it will get slow. That's something for sure. So based upon your usage, go for the proper instance type, how much you are doing a development based on that experience platform. As of now, we have only two platforms supported, which is Amazon Linux and Ubuntu, Amazon Linux, uh, which is more towards an RHEL family. So yum install and everything works over there. Timeout. This is very important point over here. So if your cloud nine environment is inactive for 30 minutes, let's shut it down because there is no point to have cloud nine up and running. If you're not doing a development, obviously being a human, I'm not going to work 24 cross seven cross 365 days. So I have to shut down those environment, which I'm not using because we are running in the world of cloud. So it's better to save money as much as we can. Network settings. So there are like two ways of doing a connection. So if you're doing on a private network, uh, use systems manager. And if you're, you know, want to do a direct SSH connection, then go for SSH environment. VPC, you have to select the VPC on which you want to configure cloud nine and select the, you know, uh, subnet on which you want to configure it. I don't have a private subnet as of now because NAT gateway is totally deleted. I don't want to pay uh, for an ideal NAT gateway. It costs a lot. So let's go with the public subnet. You can give the tagging and in the backend, it, it is creating an IAM role. Okay. Click on create. Now, obviously this will take a bit of time for, uh, make this environment up and running, but one of the important point to note over here from, you know, interview perspective as well. So when you create a cloud nine environment in the backend, it's creating EC2 instance, but it's not directly creating an EC2 instance. There is a cloud formation template in the backend that gets triggered with all the functionality and user data written in the backend. So that's what, uh, creating EC2 instance. So if I go to cloud formation, let me show you that as well. So I'll be having two cloud formation. One is already running with cloud nine environment and one is the new one that we have triggered. So this one is the created one already. So let's select this. You can select a, the output and all. Okay. It seems to be a plain template. So as you can see, this is an AMI, image ID and this is the user data that it's creating cloud nine environment association of the public IP address and everything, all sorts of settings and cited IP range is this one. That's base. I believe that's a public IP address of an instance. So that's done. Now, if I refresh it, if I go to my EC2 instance, as you can see, a new instance is getting initialized. That's what your cloud nine environment is all about. Now, uh, instead of waiting, because the process is same, you don't have to, uh, you know, uh, deviate from the process. So let me show you the existing cloud nine environment. So once it is up and running, this will show as over here, demo and demo one and click on one of the open environments. I believe this is already done, right? So let's click on demo one. It is, it was quite fast. So that's your cloud nine environment. 
and press option cmdr that's that's what it is so this is your terminal at the end at the bottom basically now if i do aws s3 ls i'll be able to see all my buckets over here so i haven't configured anything i haven't configured aws cli but still i'm able to query all the s3 buckets why because it comes with a pre-packaged aws cli with a temp credentials okay now what are options we are getting you can create a file upload a file you can also clone the github repo and obviously uh, the theme over here is jet dark and default keyboard okay so let's click on cloud9 see the preferences here you can see or or you can change basically whatever as per your requirement right so you can save the settings to disk we have code editor where you you are getting a lot of different option code formatters are there then go support enable go code completion and everything javascript support so as you can see it, it's very rich in version right python support is there then typescript support ec2 instances aws toolkit so we are getting almost everything from the developer perspective again i'm not a developer but i do a lot of scripting still i'm able to use this as per best of my knowledge but yeah from from a developer perspective i would say we are getting a very rich editor right so as you can see run configuration find the files hints and warnings go java javascript php python support typescript and ec2 instances here is the you know all the settings what we have for the ec2 instances now if you just click on this is the project setting aws toolkit now if you go to user setting here you can change as per your requirement one of the important one you will play around a lot is terminal so you can change the color and everything if you don't like jet black for that you can go to there is something called themes uh, where is that general it's somewhere over here uh, the theme section oh yeah here it is themes so if you want white you can go with that Blay, gray black whatever whatever it is right uh, another part is aws settings here is something called credential it's a managed temporary credential okay so again you don't have to configure anything it comes with a pre-packaged cli with temporary ssh key and not the ssh the access key and the secret key okay experimental then again a lot of things are over here a lot of uh, different features are available so it's something you have to go through it and based upon your requirement you can play around with cloud9 being a developer so you will be able to understand it more and we have a git support as i said uh, we have git support as well so again if we go to the preference there is something called git over here somewhere in the project setting or somewhere we have git yeah extension so git support is already enabled and you can clone your entire repo so let's go back to our presentation so i hope this clears a lot in terms of how you can create a cloud9 environment how you can use id what are options are there so it's better for you to play around with cloud9 and if you if you don't want to use it just delete it right but if you want to use it just play around with certain uh, t go with the micro instances don't go with the high end instances in order to not pay money to aws because you are doing a demo you are understanding from your end if you like it then go ahead and you know propose this to your management hey we can use cloud9 it's better than other ids uh, when we are interacting with aws i'm not i'm not 100 percent saying like uh, it's better than other ids but it is better when you interact with different aws services so the overhead of working with the application development within the world of cloud within world of aws it's very much easy as compared to other configuration please out a comment in comment section if you're facing any issue i'll be there to help you have a nice day bye bye